Welcome to Color Cluster Security Presentation. I am Seppo Jakala from Codership and working with the MariaDB Color Clustering on a daily basis. Uh, Here is the agenda for this presentation. Uh, practically four topics. Uh, when I was uh, first asked about uh, to give this presentation, I thought that there is not really much to say about the security in color itself because everything that is uh, implemented in MariaDB proper for security, uh, it should be applicable to, to color clustering as well. But there are some topics. First of all, the cluster topologies, they can have a big uh, impact on, on how secure your clustering is. Uh, how the communication between a cluster node happens, how it's configured, it has a really big imp impact for security. Then there is this uh, data rest encryption, which was uh, implemented for MariaDB 10.1, and now finally supported by a color replication as well. That is, a, uh, let's say, the first of the real security enhancement that was uh, implemented by color for MariaDB clustering. And finally, node screening by IP allow list uh, is quite new uh, feature. We are in, at the moment of implementing it for MariaDB 10.9. Okay, MariaDB versus cluster security. As I said, the, all the um, security related enhancements in MariaDB are practically available also in, in Calera cluster. Calera. Uh, it's just a bunch of uh, MariaDB nodes, and each node will uh, will use those security features that are developed in, in the uh, MariaDB itself natively. But due to the distributed topologies, there's much more communication, and there are more open ports to take care of. So these are the topics that we are uh, focusing in in this presentation. Uh, first, about the Topologies, maybe the best, um, sec most secure presentation comes from uh, the I call it here a corporate style network architecture where you have a proper uh, demilitarized zone uh, for public accesses and, and firewalling, then protecting uh, the outside world's access to the uh, uh, front end service that you have in BMZ, and then behind the firewall, you can finally access the MariaDB nodes in Color Cluster. So this is the way how to do it, and then you can control that uh, who has uh, uh, access to to MariaDB color cluster, and you could you have can be more relaxed, for example, by the uh, security of these nodes itself. Geo clustering uh, and more and more uh, deployments happen in, in cloud environments and uh, also in a wide area networks. Uh, quite usual, there is a uh, need to replicate between two data centers, for example, and if this happens in plain text, then uh, you are uh, vulnerable for uh, man-in-the-middle attacks, attacks here. So for that reason, you should always enable TLS encryption for these connections. This is uh, how the topology looks when, uh, when you have uh, configured segmentation, so there are not that many uh, connection lines between uh, oh, uh, through the open uh, public network, uh, but if you don't use segmentation, then all pairs of these MariaDB nodes they have to have uh, connection to each of the other node on, on the other side. But basically, the uh, encryption works the same way, so it's a TLS configuration and, and nothing else. Uh, and finally, there's, it's, there's always possibility, of course, to use VPN gateways, uh, and with that, you could all, if you have VPN gateways between your data centers, you can, of course, also use plain text replication inside of the VPN gateway. So that is something that uh, quite a lot also happens. This kind of topologies. Uh, and finally, the cloud lib deployments. There are many variants, of course, those different. Uh, uh, cloud providers. Uh, the bottom line here is that I don't dive in more into these topologies, but uh, uh, the safety of the deployment is based on, on the security features provided by the um, uh, cloud provider, and you, you should take care of that uh, yourself. Uh, then the cluster communication. So, how, how much communication happens between nodes and, and clients uh, in, in the cluster? First of all, there's client-server connections. These are native MariaDB connections. Then we have a node-to-node -node connections, which are replication connections, uh, carrying out the transactional 
replication uh, data and uh, finally the SST uh, state snapshot transfer connections where a joining node uh, asks for the donation of a database contents and this big bunch of uh, database cont uh, context will be then transferred over the network so that is quite vulnerable states of course uh, okay, first client to server connections. So these are native, all native, and color cluster does not uh, actually interfere with the MariaDB client and server communication at all. So whatever you have uh, uh, configured and use using for authentication or uh, privilege control or uh, encryption, it's it's readily usable in, in color cluster itself. Um, and TLS, TLS, of course, is, is the main security for this type of connections. Then replication connections, so connections between nodes. Uh, the recommendation is to use always TLS <coughs> for these connections. And this uh, actually happens to be default now also in MariaDB Enterprise versions, probably coming to uh, community as well. Uh, for establishing uh, 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 TLS in, in replication connections. You first, uh, it's based on X509 certificates, and you need to get these certificates for all the nodes in the cluster. So, if you have a readily available private key infra infrastructure, you can use uh, certification or authority from there. And if you don't have it or don't want to use it, you can uh, always create a uh, so-called mini CA uh, for cluster itself. And then copy this mini mini C uh, certificate to all the cluster nodes. This is quite common way to uh, to uh, configure the TLS for color clustering. So with this type of uh, encryption, you you get the encryption, but not the authentication. Uh, the authentic authentication is based on uh, more or less like a shared secret. So those nodes that have the necessary uh, CA certificate, then they can uh, join the cluster. And if you keep that in, in safe place, then you also minimize the probability of an uh, intruder to entering in, in a cluster. Uh, and here's a knowledge base document about more details here. Replication connections, they are uh, TLS is configured with, uh, for uh, replication VS Rep provider options. So we have additional configuration there about these certificates and keys. Uh, in order to use TLS, you have to configure every node in a cluster uh, to use TLS. So there's not, it's not possible to use partially so that you would have some connections in plain text and some, some with TLS. That's not possible. And now there's quite recent MDEF that is fixed uh, to 2131, which uh, uh, implements the dynamic upgrade from plain text replication to TLS. Uh, SSD connections, as I said, so these are the uh, connections where a new node uh, joins to the cluster and asks a sensor uh, SSD request to get the full database contents sent over. Uh, the two principal methods how to how to do this are rsync or maria backup uh, so these are the relevant ones and you just configure uh, tls for them in uh, in a mariadb configuration file in the sst group and there you just give your certificate path and and after that uh, uh, the sst connection will go through uh, s tunnel so it's a, a tls encrypted connection and again, a knowledge page document about more details here. Uh, there is one catch with the configuration uh, VSREP SST auth parameter. It's a parameter where, where you give the uh, uh, username and password. And that is in, in as I said, in a uh, configuration file. and. Uh, Yes, there, there has been some concern that should that password be plain text. And of course, that is a vulnerability. We have a MDEP about it uh, right in the bottom line. Uh, so it should be fixed at some point. Currently, it's not. Uh, but if you use Maria Backup and this SSD out, it's only needed for uh, Maria Backup SSD, where uh, we need in the donor node, in, inside the donor net, node, have a local connection. Uh, to the database server from the backup script itself. Uh, but Maria Backup, uh, it has uh, 
there's it's possible to have use certain authentication plugins where you don't need to configure this uh, authentication uh, uh, informa information in the configuration. So if you're using that, then you are not uh, actually giving any, or uh, let's say you are not uh, affected by this vulnerability of plain text uh, password in, in configuration file. Uh, then about the ports, so native MariaDB should have uh, only one port open to the public work 3306. Uh, uh, but when we come to clustering, we have three additional ports, the replication port 4567, and uh, then we have the so-called IST port, which is incremental state transfer, where we send uh, uh, it's lightweight SST. Uh, it's using a separate port for that purpose. We are sending Chica's uh, events through this connection. It's using 4568 port, and then for SSD traffic, uh, currently 4444 is the default. These ports are all uh, default values you can configure to whatever you like. Uh, but uh, eventually, whatever your ports are, you will need these four ports and you need to configure that for your firewall policies and uh, other server security control utilities like uh, SA Linux or Hapar or whatever you have in your system. Uh, and again, uh, knowledge space document about more uh, details about this. Data at rest encryption. Uh, so it's a feature where you can encrypt all data that is uh, uh, remains on, on disk, on, on file system, uh, statically. Uh, and this feature was added in MariaDB first time in version 2.1. Uh, again, knowledge space document about uh, how it actually works. Here it how it looks <coughs> uh, from the MariaDB server side. So you have a uh, uh, elements that are in uh, main memory, in, uh, like uh, the biggest bulk is of course the InnoDB buffer, buffer pool, then all client thread related stuff and bin lock caching and so on, and eventually something will be written to the disk, and for InnoDB you have uh, data files and redo lock files and also bin lock files, and the data at rest will, uh, will take care that everything that is on disk should be uh, encrypted properly. But when color replication steps into the game, uh, it basically reads from the log cache uh, replication events that happens in uh, in main memory. It stores them in in color cache Gcash called Gcash and then replicates between the cluster uh, all the information that it has stored in Gcash. Um, but in order to uh, support uh, uh, changes in the in the replication traffic, uh, we cannot estimate that how large this GCAS will grow. Therefore, it has been implemented as memory mapped mile file, and it has an uh, also file uh, a part in, in file system GCAS file, which can be uh, several gigabytes in size. Uh, when the encryption is enabled, that happens so in MariaDB 10.5, one world, uh, maybe my slide is not very uh, well uh, showing this, but this uh, IP data redo lock and bin lock, they are now uh, dotted, so it means that they are encrypted, uh, but Gcash uh, main memory structures and file was not, so that was the state in, in MariaDB 10.1. Uh, in 10.4 we implemented Gcash encryption and there uh, we have uh, also the main memory part and, and file system part is, uh, is also encrypted. Uh, for the encryption itself, uh, we use the same uh, keys and key rotation that MariaDB is using. So color replication is just delegating the, uh, the need to encrypt and decrypt. Uh, whenever it writes to uh, GCAS or reads from the GCAS, it, it will do the encryption de and decryption. And same keys uh, then available in, in, uh, in color uh, encryption as well. Uh, it was added in, in MariaDB Enterprise Server 10.4, but now that uh, the new features are coming from Enterprise to Community Server, I would uh, expect that this will be also in Community Server. Uh, I assume it's not yet there. I'm not following that closely about what happens in, in the release 
contents. Um, but anyways, you should be aware that uh, if you don't, if you are using a version uh, where uh, the GCash encryption is not yet present in your color server, so if you have using anything l lower than 10.4, you have a kind of a hole in your encryption. It's not fully data at rest, rest encryption system. So you need to take care of that uh, before you can claim that you have uh, TD in place, you have to have color enterprise or waiting for the community server uh, version to have this. Okay, then about uh, the final topic is about the SST as a seen as a security hazard. Uh, it's because uh, joining node, uh, whoever can join the node, uh, you just need to have access to the networking and uh, send an SST request to one of the nodes. And uh, if you are being served, you will, as a return, you will get the full database content. So that can be seen as a, as a security hazard. Uh, but this can be mitigated for, uh, to begin with, with the network topologies. Uh, so if you have proper firewalling, then you can control that uh, who in the first place has access to the, uh, to the donor node in your cluster. Uh, and then again, if you if you have and you should have TLS configured for your replication uh, traffic, then you also will have a TLS uh, uh, X509 certificates uh, as a shared secret. Uh, and if the intruder does not have access to this certificate, he cannot join. But then we have a third extension or precaution for controlling the SST donations. It's a node IP allow list feature. It's now uh, a pull request for this feature has been submitted for MariaDB 10.9. In, in a nutshell, it, it implements or adds a new table in a system repository MySQL VS rep allow list and it just contains a list of IP node IP addresses. And this is the list uh, where uh, only these uh, connections coming from these IP addresses are, are allowed to join the cluster. Uh, the Jira issue for this or the task, it happens to be in MariaDB Enterprise. It's meant for to five, but in principle, it's yeah, the pull request is now re already in, in Maria 10.9 Community Server Edition. Here is the animation how it works. So we have uh, two nodes in a cluster currently, nodes 11 and 12, and then they have a allow list which has place for uh, free IP addresses 11, 12, and 13. Mm. And an SST request is coming from a ill-behaving intruder uh, who tries to steal your data. Uh, uh, but because uh, his IP address does not match this table, then uh, it's, it's not getting anything from this cluster. But then if you have the proper node, so the node 13 is joining back, send an SST request, it can join. And uh, during the SST, we also send the, uh, the allow list table. So all the nodes will at all times have the, uh, the correct um, allow list, the same uh, allow list. And this is also an inner DP table and it's replicated. If you make changes to this table in one of the nodes, then uh, the changes will be replicated and the cluster will always take care that the correct allow list configuration is, is in place. All right, that's all from Galera uh, Cluster Security in MariaDB. Uh, I first thought that not much content, but it turned out, yes, there really is. And, uh, and more is coming, the more, more security related features are in a pipeline. So thanks for the presentation and watching. Bye bye.